Well, yeah, you know, Sunday's game is going to be a, uh, you know, very difficult challenge for us. Um, you know, Northwestern's a veteran team that's played a lot of ball together over the course of their career. Um, had a great win against Minnesota. Played really inspired in that game. Um, you could tell they had they had great motivation um, in this last one. So, um, you know, we have to be ready to go. I think they, they've showed changing defenses here late. That's always something that's given us some problems. And they're a team that really executes on offense. They run a ton of stuff uh, to get guys good looks. And, uh, you know, everything kind of goes through Bryant McIntosh, who, um, you know, 16 assists, zero turnovers in his last game is pretty impressive. So we, we have our work cut out for us. First question, Zach. In terms of your team and, and kind of the response you got from Minnesota to Penn State, do you see, I guess, a good re continuing to get good responses in practices. Maybe you build one positive result on another. Yeah, I think we've been getting better. Um, you know, I thought we responded well after our Wisconsin game, and we came to Minnesota and, uh, you know, fought our way all the way to the end. Um, and then coming home, playing against Penn State is very talented. Uh, you know, difficult team to guard off the dribble. I thought our guys, you know, again, stuck with it and just kind of played tough-minded. You know, played through stretches where we haven't scored or, or made some shots, and we've kind of hung in there. So, uh, two two good wins um, in the league, and uh, you know, have a have a chance to play um, a really good Northwestern team here. So we should be, you know, excited to play on Sunday. Uh, have a couple of days here to, to continue to work at it. It's just to follow up on that. What are, what are the keys? If you look at kind of break down the last two performances, what do you feel like you can build from? What do you guys need to build on? Well, I think, you know, it starts and stops with our team and rebound. We rebounded really well in the last couple games. And uh, from an offensive rebounding perspective, you know, that's given us as much of an added punch um, as anything. You know, guys just, you know, continuing to work with great motor, different guys contributing on the glass. And it's one of the big reasons why we beat Penn State was just the second opportunities that we had the amount of second chance baskets. And um, I thought it was good against Minnesota. So that, that's been good. But our defensive rebounding is something that also has done a pretty good job in the last two games. You know, I didn't think we rebounded the ball at all in the second half against Wisconsin. And I think guys have taken the message. You know, our guards have to get in there and mix it up. You know, Robert has done a really nice job, as have Zach, of defensive rebounding, um, you know, out of their area, going in there and cleaning some things up. And, and obviously, Juwan speaks for itself and what he's doing. So the rebounding focus, you know, coming coming into the league play is something that's uh, it's very important. I think from an offensive perspective, we're we're not we're not turning the ball over uh, as much. You know, especially in our last couple of games, we've I think we've played with you know about an average of 11, uh, which is good. And um, you know, I think we're getting some pretty good looks. If we could ever start to get a little bit more consistency shooting the ball, um, you know, I think we could be even better offensively. But uh, you know, just not taking care taking care of the ball, getting better shots, I think has been big, and um, and also the the rebounding emphasis. Coach, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but just without Duran, I mean, how did, how did, I get, how else do the expectations, the rebounding expectations specifically change with uh, Juwan and the guards? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, not having Duran um, in there with his size, obviously from, you know, you know, our team's perspective, I think everyone has to understand how important it is from, you know, it's an all five, five guys approach on defense and from an offensive rebounding standpoint, you know, finding a way to get second shots when guys are coming in there. Uh, but rebounding, the awareness, uh, we know we're not as big. Uh, so there's got to be a team approach to what we're doing and understand how important it is um, to be able to hold our own on, on the glass. It's a big part of this league, you know, just in general. So, yes, uh, it's, it's Deron's absence has, you know, created a, a sense of awareness. You know, it's got to be a desperate awareness uh, that rebounding is something that's, uh, that's vital. Justin kind of struggled to get going the other night, but do you still kind of foresee him being able to step up in a bigger role? Oh, yeah. With yeah, without question. He's going to have a you know much greater role. Um, got a tough start against uh, Penn State, you know, uh, coming off of a really good game. You know, Lamar Stevens is a tough cover, and I thought he picked up a couple couple quick fouls, which got him out of rhythm. And then in the second half, he, he didn't have a chance to really get going. So, but I expect, you know, clearly a much bigger role, you know, that, that uh, you know, he's got to anticipate coming his way, just, just the same. Now that Duran's had the surgery, just what do you expect his recovery timeline and, and I guess prognosis to be moving forward? Um, uh, he's been given a good prognosis of full recovery. Uh, we have great optimism that everything is, is went well. Um, I think the procedure uh, now is for him probably in about six months to be going, you know, on his feet, you know, so he's got, you know, upwards into the summertime. So uh, he has to rehab and, 
and do his parts if it's over the next few months. And as we get through the spring and the early part of the summer, we expect him to start to be back on his feet and, uh, you know, hopefully getting cleared to start training, um, you know, more so in our summer school. So he's got a chance right now to take a deep breath and, uh, you know, do his rehab. Tim, Docs are all going to be, all, all, you know, on him. Um, the big thing for him will be to manage, you know, this off season through surgery, his conditioning and his weight, and just you know being able to get off to a good start when he does have a chance in the summertime. You've had um, you have a little time to prepare for Northwestern. You mentioned there are multiple defenses. I think you said they play two two one, for example, which you don't see very often. So. How important is the preparation for the guys to recognize that on the court in terms when they're changing defenses? Yeah, I think they you know they went exclusive to it against Minnesota with the two two one drop matchup zone. Um, you know, maybe caught Minnesota off guard a little bit just because they hadn't been doing it, um, and they were able to stay with it. Uh, for us, having a few days to prepare is going to be key on changing defenses, what they're in, and how we have to attack it. Uh, to get good looks. You know, I think one of the things about our team is we can't live and die by the jump shot. And I think that's the one thing we want to avoid as we get ready to, to go against the mix of the match or whatever it may be is to continue to work and find ways to attack the paint, get fouled, uh, post, post the ball a little bit. Um, so we're, we're going to have to be organized for sure. It'll give us a few days here to, to go against it, and it is unique. You know, very few teams in our league are playing like that. Clifton's played, I think, eight minutes in the last month. Is, is there a point where you have to kind of maybe throw him in there just to get him ready in case he needs to play longer stretches? Yeah, I think so. I think with injuries and foul trouble, there's always going to be that opportunity where he's going to get his chance, and uh, we want him to be ready. He's working extremely hard in practice. Uh, he's getting a lot of reps now in practice. Um, but I think, you know, you know, when his time comes to not have him uh, not ready is um, – you know, unfair. You know, I definitely think we have to try to find ways to get him in there so when he is called upon to do things for longer stretches of time that uh, he feels more comfortable. So we're looking for those opportunities right now. Um, and we feel he's ready, he'll get them. And then just to follow up to that uh, quickly, is, is it something that maybe he needs to show you in practice or does he just need to be more physically ready? What do you kind of need to see from him for him when the time comes for him to get those opportunities? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know physically, you know, being ready to battle and being ready to attack the glass and, and, and the, some of the things that he's going to be asked to do, uh, you know, uh, he's been up against that a little bit just from a strength perspective, but he's getting better at it. And I think with his looks and some of the things he's getting in practice to be more confident offensively, um, to just be himself and try to continue to work through what we're doing, take chances in practice, uh, working on your game, so to speak. Um, and when you have your opportunities in the game, you feel more comfortable. So he's just learning. He's learning the college game. He's, he's, been, a, he's been a great teammate, and um, he's really a great kid. So good things happen to those guys. Coach, with uh, Duran being out, has it done actually two things, brought the team together as a, a committee on everything, but also made you guys a little quicker defensively getting to the rebounds a little faster maybe? Yeah, I think anytime a guy goes down, it does, especially a, a big part of your team, guy like Duran, I think everybody takes a deep breath and says, wow, this is going to be hard. You know, we really got to be locked in, you know, to what the coaches are saying. We have to, you know, get the most out of every rep in practice. I think there is an awareness thing that your guys – you know, immediately say themselves, man down. That that gives other guys opportunities. So you you get, you know, you get that that tightness, that toughness. You know, when sometimes when a guy goes down, uh, we're definitely way quicker and uh, we're way faster. You know, um, defensively. You know, we have much more versatility uh, with our front court in terms of the quickness level. So it's something that um, you know, as one negative thing happens, you have to just immediately find the next positive and take advantage of it. And we're trying to fly around a little bit more. Um, but definitely, I think we've been quicker to the ball a little bit. And, um, you know, just finding a way right now to uh, you know, continue to create an identity, you know, with this new crew. And um, I think they've done a nice job in the way they've played the last couple of games. Um, obviously, Juan is a guy you know, who gives you a front court presence and you work a lot through him. Northwestern has a kid up front that they like to work their offense through. Can you talk about him a bit? Yeah, Derek Pardon's a really good player. Um, you know, he's got a great presence. They do a great job getting him the ball in certain spots. He's got a great touch around the basket. He's got range to 15 to 16 feet. Uh, his length gives them a guy on the offensive glass, you know, in and around the basket. Uh, definitely one of the better uh, front court players that we've seen. And just in watching them, how they play, they definitely – uh, they don't neglect them. You know, they, they find ways to get them the ball. So it's going to be really important for our team to do a great job of trying to, number one, you know, limit catches and limit easy catches, um, keeping him off the glass. But, 
you know, a lot like Watkins um, against Penn State, and a lot like, you know, Murphy and some of those guys against Minnesota. We're seeing again, we're seeing big guys that are a part of the game plan, and uh, you know, for the most part, I think we're doing a decent job right now, just with our quickness and our crowding and trapping, and just, you know, doing our best to try to make it hard for those guys. But he's he's a he's a tough kid. Uh, for Duran, I guess, how helpful is it for him to have a guy like Colin to lean on who just went through a long rehab process last year? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, anytime you get injured, you want to be uh, around guys that uh, support you and uh, have been through, you know, sort of the ups and the downs that can kind of, you know, it's not always fun when you're going through your rehabilitation after surgery. Um, there's some, you know, very, very frustrating days. Uh, especially when you're sitting there on the bench and you're watching guys play. and uh, So it's definitely good to have a group around them. Colin's definitely uh, been a supportive guy. But I just think in general, our staff, uh, Tim Garl, our doctors, there's a lot of positive people around Deron that are going to take good care of him. Sorry to keep peppering with the injury question. <clears throat> Sorry, but um, Colin, I guess is it just with the shoulders, just kind of like a fatigue thing and it's just sort of he's got to manage it basically or, or is there something more there? No, I mean, he, um, he had a, you know, a... Uh, it came out a little bit in practice. It's one of those deals that uh, went back in. And sometimes those things take a couple of days. They were really sore, and a week is sore, and then a couple more weeks after that, they get a little better. So I think it'll be a week by week thing as long as he doesn't have a setback that he'll get better. Um, he's uncomfortable with the brace. I don't think he likes to wear the brace, but it's something that I think that's going to be protective and supportive of him. He'll get used to it. Um, it uh, I thought, you know, against Penn State, he played with a great motor. Um, had some really good looks. They just didn't go in. But, you know, he got 27 minutes. And, uh, you know, that was really big with Justin's foul trouble. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.